clue what to do. I just drink loads of coffee. And I'm like, Travel by two inches. 
And then your hands an inch wider than your than your feet basically so nothing nothing drags. Does anyone want to come up and do a demo? So this is an open Q&A session. So basically going to run it pretty simple, put your hands up if you um, want. I mean every meal is the cheap meal and strong man. It's, uh, it's basically get as much calories as you, end, as you can end. So you know, on the lead up to World Strongest Man I was on 12 and a half thousand calories a day. And uh, you know, a breakfast would consist of a full pack of sausages, over 12 sausages pack of bacon, eggs, hash browns, black pudding and then I'd have all the fruits after that, porridge yeah and that was just breakfast, you're talking probably about 2,000 calories a meal and I was having at least six meals a day you know so it's very hardcore Does it have to be an eye on like, nutrients to make sure like, there's a certain balance like, like protein or certain vitamins or... Yeah, just as long as it was wholesome so like you know, like, like I said for the breakfast, it was all meat and fats. You know, and, and for a strong man, that's essential. Fats and fats and proteins are you know, basically what we're made up of. Um, so just very, you know, dinner would always be steak and chicken, pasta, rice. Uh, tea would always be spag bol, pasta, you know, curry and rice. Very basic, just huge amounts. If you could pretty much, it's pretty much a standard normal diet, but just times it by four. So if you have a bowl of porridge, I have a bucket of porridge. That's, that's the best way to explain it. And do you find that when you're competing, do you find yourself like, force feeding, or does your body just say, I, I want or I need these calories? Does it feel like a chore to eat that much or to enjoy it? Uh, food became somewhat of a chore. So it was a job at the end of the day, you know, eating constantly. From the second I wake up to the second I go to bed, I've got something in my hand. And it got to the point where food wasn't enjoyable. So, it, 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 it was force feeding all the time, but that's what you've got to do. So, sorry, lastly, when you're not competing then, how, how much does the calories drop? If you're 12 and a half, you said 12 and a half thousand. So does it drop any but when you're not leading up to the contest? Yeah, I mean, like, at the minute, uh, I'm on about nine to 10,000 calories a day. I'm not training as hard and I've dropped a bit of body weight. Um, I mean, I did a study with a university and if I was to just sit in a chair for a whole day for 12 hours, I would burn 4,900 calories. Just functioning, that's just heart, lungs, kidneys, that's just function. So I need a minimum of 5,000 calories a day just to stop me losing weight and then all the rest is all from a function, you know, going to the gym, walking about, doing all my activities, so. Yeah, it's uh, it's a lot. Of, you have to consume a lot of calories. How do you work with like multiple coaches? Um, strongman from day one for me has always been a trial and error sport. It's not football. You know, there's no coaches out there to tell you what to do or, or how what to lift and where to go. I mean, when I was I did my first strongman competition when I was 19 years old, and I'd never touched a strong bit of strongman kit in my life. I went to World Strongest Man in 2012 and I still hadn't done any strongman training whatsoever, none at all. So, it's, um, it's tough because you've just got to self-learn, you know, to pick up a yoke, to learn to do a yoke or a farmer's, I'd have to look on YouTube of like older and more experienced, uh, you know, people like, like Terry Hollands and Brian Shaw, I just have to watch and learn. Um, it's tough because you know, I get people asking me all the time for coaching. I, I haven't got the time for that. But I was thinking to myself, God, 
I wish, you know, 10 years ago I had the world's strongest one in the area to do coaching with. But um, it's just not, it's not that, it uh, doesn't fall that way all the time, does it? So I've never had a coach. I've never had a dietitian. I've had, I've had nothing. You know, I've just done it off my own back. It's always been trial and error. Apes, where you watch TV and it was either, there was three or four channels, it was either EastEnders, Hollyoaks or Strongman. And of course, everyone watched Strongman. Why? Because people want to see freaky things. You know, we're obsessed. It, it's human nature to be obsessed with strength. And over the years, it's got, obviously we haven't had any champions from the UK, it's got lost in, in and fought, the TV have lost interest. And this last, this last sort of four or five years, the sport has really shot up. And it's, it, it, it is the shows, but it's, it's the characters of the sport that are doing that. It, the, the WWE was run on car parks and in pubs until one man came along, and that was Andre the Giant. When Andre the Giant came along, WWE went massive. And that's what's happened to this sport. We've got people like Brian Shaw, Thor, well, myself. We've got some massive, huge characters. Not just big people, people that are willing to shout and growl and swear and be themselves and entertain. And that's the big difference. Come January 1st, when Will Strongest Man airs on TV, every single child in the country that watches that program is going to want to be a strongman. So, I can see the sport becoming very national again. They'll be teaching it in PE classes, which, believe it or not, the last year or so, I've, I've heard of it being te taught in schools. Strongman's taught as a PE class. And five years ago, that would never have happened. That was unheard of. So it's getting, it's getting that more recognition. Um, will it ever become as big as football? No, it won't. But like the WWE, it will get big. You know, it's all about entertainment.